Good morning. I'm Kyle and I am one half of the Wandering Shores. I want to be the first to welcome you to Much Water Recreation Area just between Paradise and St. Regis, Montana off State Route 135 which is behind me. Coming from that direction is Paradise. Coming from that direction is St. Regis. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd appreciate it if you click the uh, subscribe button below, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell so you're notified every time we do a video. So you're here to find out more about the Much Water Recreation Area and free dispersed camping for up to 16 days. So right back there is 135 where the intro was filmed. And basically you turn in, you're gonna go on north on this little road here. I'll show you what that looks like. So a couple things about this recreation area. Um, number one, there's 16 day stay limit. Number two, it's very big rig friendly. So you're not gonna have any problem. There's probably, I'm guessing, maybe about 20 total camping spots in the, uh, in the loop here. And uh, they're pretty easy to identify. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice. It's not very busy. We got here on a Thursday and there was probably four or five spots taken. That was it. So as you're driving in, you're going to see right there where my red truck is parked. That's going to be the split in the road with a little information placard right there telling you that you can't fish during the middle of the day because of the temperatures of the water, etc. But it also says that there's a 16-day stay limit. So a little bit longer than most national forest areas. Right as you come in, and from what I've seen, including us, we have been going counterclockwise. So we're going to go, we're going to take the uh, route to the right here, and then you'll end up coming out here. So it's a loop, so you can definitely get in and out very easy. There's a spot over here on the right-hand side where you can see that tent. Um, that's going to be for a small rig. I mean, you could back your RV in there, um, but there's really a lot better spots. And uh, I'll take you around the rest of the loop and show you the other camping right, spots. we're going to be going around the... Like I said, counterclockwise, here off to the right, you can see there's a pickup truck with a camper uh, or a tent on it. Nice spot there. Um, you could definitely fit a, a small to intermediate sized uh, travel trailer or RV in that area. Um, the whole loop is about a total of a mile, so just keep that in mind. Um, most all of the camping spots are going to be on the right hand side of this road, which is ideal because that is also where the river is. You can see here off to the right, there's a large fifth wheel back there, a big uh, black stone or something I, that's back there right now. Um, a Bigfoot, sorry, a Bigfoot, Bighorn. Let's go with Bighorn. Um, they got in probably through this entrance. Most of the campsites have an in and an out, which makes it a little bit easier and almost like a, a giant pull through. Um, all right, let me go a little bit further. There are two uh, outhouses here. Here's one of them on the right hand side. So you do have access to the restrooms if needed. There's a nice spot here where that travel trailer is backed in. You can fit pretty much any size rig in there with no problem. Obviously, they've got two cars in there. Um, and that's probably a, a 20 foot travel trailer that was in there just for size. There's another small one right here on the right. Um, you know, if you have a small uh, camper van or something like that, go up here around the S curve. This area here on the left is actually just a cut through to loop back to the exit. So that's not really a camping spot, but there is a camping spot directly across from it um, right there. Go up here a little bit further. There's a spot right back in here. Again, most of these spots have pretty significant tree cover. So if you've got um, solar, you may have some problems. Let me show you that spot over there. And then we're going to be coming up to the spot that Michelle and I have chosen. And you'll see there's an entrance and an exit, but we chose to go. We just backed down the exit because the entrance is right here and has a pretty large dip on the edge here. Um, there's our camper back there. You can see we'll uh, we'll finish the video there So I show you a little bit more about that spot You go a little bit further. There's a spot right there 
and where that big toy hauler, that striker toy hauler is right there. That's a nice large spot. That, that rig's probably about 35 feet. There's a spot over here on the left which could fit quite a few RVs. Right there. And then you get to the point where you kind of can go left and go back out the exit. I'm gonna go this direction because there's another little figure eight loop um, here. So off here on the right hand side, you'll see where that Geo Pro is. This is a large area that could fit many, many rigs. Kind of show you that. And then down here, there's a couple small spots around this other loop, this lollipop loop down here. Again, we're gonna take the, we're gonna go to the right. Um, this is a much smaller area back here, but I will say there was a large, large uh, travel trailer parked back here at the very end. Um, and I'll kind of show that spot to you. Here's a little uh, pull through spot right there. Good for a small rig or a, or a camper a van. Right back there down that little down that little area is a nice uh, boondocking spot back there. But if you've got a big rig, I would not go down there to try to turn around. I would just use this road right here and back down there so that you can pull your rig in. Um, because I'm, I would be concerned about you trying to get back out and having to turn the rig around. Ignore all the traffic up there. They're doing construction up on 135, so there's traffic up there that has to wait. Currently, it's uh, middle of August, or actually the end of August 2022, and sometimes the wait during the day is about 20 minutes because they're blasting some rocks and there's a bunch of falling debris. So we've made that little loop. There's that GeoPro. There is the other outhouse, should you need to use it. And then, if you choose not to go back that way, you go this direction towards the exit. And there are a couple spots this way. These are obviously away from the river. Here's where that cut through would uh, bring you back out to if you had cut through it on the first pass through. Here's a spot on the left-hand side of the road here. Let me take you out and show you. Nice large spot with a lot of uh, tree cover. So if you're trying to stay out of the heat and you don't have air conditioning or something, that might be a good spot. But just following, uh, sorry, just following the, uh, the road back out, And that brings us back to the beginning where we started. So I'm gonna take you over and show you our spot, give you a glimpse of the river. So, all right, as you can see, we're back at my camper. Um, just wanted to tell you a few things about this camping spot. So first of all, there is less than one bar of Verizon. So you're really not even able to make a call or get any data. So there is really no internet out here. We have both Verizon and T-Mobile and we don't get anything. However, um, at this spot here, we get really good Starlink because we can aim it directly north. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we're right here on the river. And one last thing to mention, um, as you can see right across, I don't know how clear it's coming out with a wide angle lens, but that is a railroad track. And this is a pretty busy railroad. Um, I would say we get between six and 10 tra trains a day, um, including at two o'clock in the morning sometimes. So if you are a light sleeper or have difficulty getting back to sleep, um, these this whole area might not be real good for you just for the fact that it is it can get pretty loud um, we've got a couple videos coming out and we're gonna uh, show some of the uh, the noise from the trains but um, it is absolutely beautiful it's super peaceful when the trains aren't going through you can hear a little bit of the road noise but honestly I think most of that is because of the construction right now and people are having to stop up there um, other than that um, you know that road is not super busy but yeah this is a perfect spot especially if you're heading from like quarter 
Coeur d'Alene, Idaho up to Glacier National Park, this would be a perfect stop. So hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we have a lot of other videos where we do campground reviews along with other RV living stuff. So please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Thanks, guys.